Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. Okay, welcome back everyone to theCUBE special presentation of EMC World 2015. We're live in Las Vegas for day two of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of theCUBE, our flagship program, where we go out to the events and extract a signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante, our next guest, next guest is Ihid Rokosh, general manager, co-founder of Extreme.io, welcome to theCUBE. Great to be here, thank you. So, success is happening. Um, it is. You saw this all coming. What, what, what's, going on with you right now, obviously great product, performance is there. What's, right. are, you, are you feeling like this was what you saw? And what level of impact um, surprised you? Right, so uh, what's happening is we are taking the market by storm. Um, I think we did hope for this to happen. We did expect success. Uh, in reality, it might be uh, somewhat better than, than even expected, or I would say faster. Uh, the adoption has been uh, amazingly fast, uh, extremely successful. Um, uh, we, uh, we have a ramp that's faster than anything uh, seen before, uh, and so uh, this is a true rocket ship. So EMC behind you, great sales motion with the, with the company, great technology, perfect market conditions for disruption and innovation. What surprised you in terms of the deployment of the solution and the product, and its impact to not only EMC's portfolio, but to the customers? Right, so um, I think what we are seeing is uh, uh, the ability to uh, create real transformation for customers. It's not only, you know, maybe two, three years ago, if you were asking me, oh, so where is this going? Uh, yeah, we are going to critical applications where speed is important. It's much more than that today. We are witnessing customers transforming their business by leveraging Extreme IO. Its speed is absolutely an important element there. Our ability to scale speed with the scale out architecture of Extreme IO, but the range of services, efficiency, simplicity, uh, uh, copy management, uh, we call all of this together agility. Uh, allowing customers to do things faster, easier, uh, much more efficiently than before. And we hear again and again the feedback from our customers that uh, they feel their infrastructure is transforming and their business is transforming thanks to that. We call it the locomotive in the earlier segment, the locomotive of the disruption and innovation. Um, can you share uh, what use cases that you're seeing out there right now that are driving more and more faster change, and specifically workloads, that's been the buzzword. Right. Workloads, right. Is right. all in the right. cloud, on-prem, on data center, hybrid cloud, workloads are the centerpiece of that. What workloads are perfect for Extreme IO, and which workloads are you going into as a locomotive and yes. creating great value? So I think the I don't know if there is an ideal or an ideal workload for Extreme IO, but that's exactly the point. The perfect workload is consolidated, mixed workloads that all of them go on Extreme IO, enjoying data reduction with deduplication and compression that makes uh, an important case of the economic side, and uh, leveraging the performance density that we offer that's always there uh, to uh, allow larger pools uh, of, of storage, uh, self-service in terms of simplicity of allocating uh, storage. You don't need to tune anything. You don't need to, uh, uh, to think about uh, how and where do I place data. You have a mix of workloads, uh, typically with a lot of copies on some of the data, uh, a, a virtual machine, uh, 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 collection that goes all on Extreme IO, and uh, a great tool uh, for simplicity and speed. And I wonder if we could, you know, the entrepreneur in me wants to tell the story or learn more about the story that is Extreme IO. You're yeah. a very small company. You had not a lot of market presence, if any, you know, prior to getting acquired. I don't know how many people were you when you got acquired by you know, about so forty. Forty people. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so. This company comes in and says, okay, we're going to pay a bunch of money and bring you in. Obviously, you know, you had to 
seriously consider that. You did. You come in. What was that like? Um, I mean, you essentially didn't have a shipping product at the right. time. Right, right. Um, which is just amazing. And you got these guys coming in, kicking the tires. They, who, who, who knows, they may be trying to steal your ideas, right? You, you, but you have to take the chance. What was it like back then? Take us through that now that it's sort of sure. a couple so of years on. I think the, the, the big decision for us to, to join forces with EMC uh, had really the purpose of uh, maximizing our chance to win and lead in the market. Uh, I think as entrepreneurs, the number one thing we want to do is win. And uh, we knew we have the best technology, we knew we have a great architecture, and we knew that EMC is not only the number one player in storage, but also a great company in terms of uh, going through acquisitions. And so I think we, uh, we expected this to be successful, and it proved itself. We got the support and backing from EMC, not only the financial means, but uh, the support of the field organization and, and support organizations around it. And we got the freedom and independence to run quickly, leverage what we need, run independently where this is better, and deliver. And so, indeed, we deliver it. So, you come into this company, they, they acquire you, and then all of a sudden you have all these resources. But a lot of times, if, if you apply too many resources to a problem, you mess it up, right? You think of a right. small, agile development team. So, so how did that all work? You had the autonomy to continue to develop the product. At the same time, if you're going to ship a product to EMC customers, they're going to really make sure it's bulletproof. Right. So you had a lot of work to do, and it took a while. Yes. So what? what how did that go? Take us through that sort of sequence. So, so yeah, absolutely, and this is the reason why it took um, a little bit more than a year between the time of acquisition and when we uh, went to the market, and then even a few more months before we, we did define this to be generally available. Which is still pretty and, fast, actually, when you think about it. It's pretty fast, uh, but very uncommon in terms of the phase of being acquired, right? Pre-product. Pre right. Um, and uh, I think uh, we continued and still continue to work uh, aggressively, uh, uh, the type of, of, of work you would expect from a startup, uh, but leveraging the resources and the support organizations of the big EMC in a, in a very productive uh, way um, and, and so this period of time was continuing uh, um, the startup mode of operation uh, with more resources uh, doing more and setting the bar very high on reliability uh, manufacturability serviceability uh, training of the EMC uh, field teams and so on. Was that a culture shift for you? I mean, I mean you obviously you know what it takes to uh, to, hit, to hit that bar. Right. So was it, okay, this is the bar we have to hit, what do you need to hit it? And then what resources are required and then go? Um, was it that simple or was it, were there structural discussions of, okay, do you need us to fly over some of our engineers? Right. Did that happen? How did uh, that? No, no, I, I think uh, no, you know, big company, uh, no, par no Americans parachuting in. <laughs> no, 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 not really. Uh, tell us what you That's need. Good. <laughs> Much more of tell us what you need. We trust you to take the right decisions. Uh, leverage what you can. Uh, and uh, I can't, uh, I can't say uh, enough good things about the EMC culture, which initially, uh, before we we, we learned uh, to know know it intimately. Uh, is a little bit of uh, concern. This big company, startup company, clash, potential clash, proved extremely productive. EMC proved to be very open to new technologies, uh, very open to disrupt itself uh, when it makes sense. And I think this is what's, what we see happening today. We are disrupting the market and EMC is not afraid of disrupting itself. Yeah, so in that 12 to 14 month period, it couldn't have been all pretty. <laughs> there must have been some <laughs> tough. How did you handle those? Maybe you know. <laughs> it's 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 almost all pretty, not easy, but pretty. Yes. So many challenges, tons of work uh, um, uh, on the engineering side, on the market, go to market side, manufacturing services side, a lot of work, 
Uh, no, nothing is easy when you have a very high bar in terms of goals and expectations and quality. But, uh, but I have to say, very cooperative, great teams on the EMC side working very closely with the Extreme IMT. But, but there was, um, it had to be hard because competition was making a lot of noise, yep. the market was taking off. Yep. There must have been, uh, Salesforce must have been chomping at the bit to get the product out. Yep. Come on, let's ship it, let's ship it, let's ship it. So, I think that's when you came up with this notion of, uh, well, maybe not, directed availability was maybe before, but anyway. Right. Um, that must have been hard, not to... Uh, Pressure, yeah. yes, absolutely. So what did that do? Did that uh, we, just... We, we didn't go, we, did, we weren't first to the market, right? right. Uh, I don't, you know, we weren't last there, but we definitely weren't first. Right. So you see the market starting to emerge, and uh, hey, we need this to GA, we need this to GA. Uh, but you know, we uh, we are used to uh, to uh, work under pressure. <laughs> uh, maybe it even brings the best of us. I don't know, and uh, and it worked. And uh, the power of the product, the architecture, what it can do, combined with the uh, uh, the EMC field presence, got us to uh, become number one uh, player in 2014. Uh, verified just a few days ago by, by Gartner's uh, numbers uh, in our first year of GA. So uh, it worked. What's next product wise? What's the next innovation? Because obviously you have success. Right. It's, uh, you know, the wedge, first, you know, high performance, it's landing, expanding other areas. Right, right, um, right. Impacting architectures, use, other use cases, kind of the meat and potatoes. You know, you mentioned you do been some back on recovery. What's True. next in the roadmap? So, uh, just this week we uh, made a big announcement. Uh, Extreme IO 4.0 has tons of uh, new features, capabilities, big ones around replication and online scaling and larger capacities and more, more capabilities and a very long list of, of smaller features that are extremely important and together create an offering that uh, has you know zero excuse uh, in terms of why not deploy uh, an all flash array. Uh, we have uh, 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 presented a set of capabilities that is really designed to allow uh, uh, an easy decision to go to the all flash agile data center. You get a lot of data passing through Extreme IO, yep. phone back data, etc. What surprised you? When what's surprising you from the rapid success and all the data you're gathering. Any learnings? Uh, absolutely, so there is a lot of data we collect from the field real time, all the time, on, uh, from our systems that are all calling home, of course. We analyze it, uh, we draw a lot of conclusions on how customers are using the systems. Uh, we can obviously uh, do proactive maintenance in case anything is needed. Uh, I think I don't know, I wouldn't say surprising, but uh, encouraging and, and fun thing to witness through these systems is you look at, you see how much uh, uh, data goes on the Extreme IO systems, how much performance these systems deliver each and every day, every second, uh, and yes, various aspects of the data we collect demonstrate the range of, of, of workloads and different ways customers are, are using Extreme IO. Do you think that, um, I got to ask this question, we ask it all the time. <laughs> Do you think that the upstarts in this business can achieve escape velocity, given that the EMC, <clears throat> HP, IBM have sort of made their bets, acquired companies seem to have viable strategies. You know, in the earlier virtualization days, you had a three par, uh, an isolon, a compellent, a data domain, they achieved escape velocity. Maybe they got lucky with the economy, I don't know. But do you think the flash guys, a lot of them, will be able to achieve escape velocity? Right, so, so by now, I think most will not be able to do so. Can there be an exception? Possibly, yes. Uh, you need a lot of investment and you need very strong differentiation if you are trying to compete with the big guys. And as you mentioned, uh, um, uh, EMC for one uh, is, has very strong presence and a very strong offering. Uh, other large players have some offerings as well, 
it's becoming more and more difficult. So most of these players, I think, will find it difficult. So EMC is the leader in storage, but at the same time, two thirds of the customers don't buy from EMC. Do you expect that you can achieve a higher proportion of market with all flash than EMC has been able to with all of its storage? That's, that's absolutely our, our goal. So uh, I think we have reached more or less the EMC share in our first year. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we are looking to, to uh, run faster and uh, get further uh, in 2015 and, uh, and uh, finish 15 with a market share in the all flash market that's bigger than EMC's market share in the general storage. And place. it seems like, you talked before, you weren't the first to market, you weren't the last, but you've now seemed to leapfrog the market in many right. ways, and you've got more momentum. What gives you confidence that you can sustain that, that lead? Um, uh, the, the best thing that gives me confidence is the feedback we get from our customers, the repeat business, the amount of repeat business we are seeing, and the momentum. That's, at the end of the day, that's the proof of the pudding, is in the eating. Uh, what I know also is what we have on the roadmap, what kind of innovations are coming, uh, how much EMC is backing us, uh, not afraid of disruption, as I mentioned earlier. The combination of product, innovations, feedback from customers, repeat business, and the, 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 the EMC uh, weight go, uh, in, in the field on Extreme IO, this gives us the confidence that we are, we are uh, escaping and, and uh, running ahead of competition. We really appreciate your time on theCUBE. Congratulations on all your success. Thank you uh, very much. Streetmyo is continuing to dominate repeat customers, land and expand more sales, and again, fastest growing product. Congratulations. Thank this you very the much. Cube. Thank you. We have more coverage coming right back after this short break. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. <laughs>